Hello, I'm Mark from Penguin Digital and I'm bringing you this video in partnership with CodeCourse. Today we're going to look at how we can use the new Tailwind JIT compiler within our Laravel projects. So if you're not already aware, Tailwind has released a new experimental, it's still in beta, but so far from my testing it works pretty well, a JIT compiler. And what this means is it builds your CSS on the fly when you include a new class. This has two main advantages. The first one is that you can chain multiple Tailwind selectors together to produce unique styles that you couldn't do in the past versions due to Tailwind trying to keep its size down. But now you can add a combination as of many things as you want and the JIT compiler will just compile that CSS for you at the time that you write it rather than it falling back on to a class that's already been written in the library. And the second advantage of this JIT compiler, and the one that we're going to be looking at mainly today, is the performance increase. So instead of compiling the whole library now, as I've just mentioned previously, it only compiles the classes that you're creating. So this means during development, it no longer has to compile megabytes worth of CSS if it's only going to be using a couple of the classes. So let's look at a practical example of this. I've got a fresh Laravel application here and I've installed Laravel Breeze, which uses Tailwind for its UI. The first thing we'll want to go and do is install the Tailwind JIT compiler. So over in your command line, you can do an npm install. I'm going to pass this the D flag and we're going to install Tailwind CSS forward slash JIT. And I'm going to assume at this point you've already got Tailwind CSS and Post CSS installed because they come with Breeze. If you don't, then you'd also need to install the Tailwind CSS library and the Post CSS library. Cool. So now that we've got that installed, we just need to let Tailwind know where our views are. So in the root of the project, if you are following along with Breeze, you already have a tailwind.config.js file. Now, if you're not using Breeze or one of the other front end scaffolding that uses Tailwind, then you'll have to make this config for, for yourself. But the main thing that you need to be worrying about here is adding in the links to your views. So at the moment, this looks in subfolders in views for any Blade components. But the way that Breeze is set up, the dashboard is sat in the root folder. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to copy this down and I'm just going to get rid of that there. So now we're going to look for all Blade files in the root of the views and also in any subdirectories. Okay, so now let's just run a test compile on this. So again, over in the terminal, I'm going to do an npm run dev. So this gives us a baseline of us to work with, with the old method of compiling Tailwind. And then we'll compare this with the outcome of the JIT compiler. You can see here it compiled in 6.6 .6 milliseconds. And the CSS file is 3.75 megabyte. So now let's enable another feature in Tailwind uh, called dark mode. So just after the purge here, I'm going to add a new key called dark mode. And I'm going to set this to media. Now let's just run our build again. As you can see this time, it's actually took over 8,000 milli, almost 9,000 milliseconds to compile. And the app.css is 6.47 megabyte. So you can see as you add more and more of Tailwind's features in, this is going to be a slower, slower process during development, and that CSS file is going to get larger and larger. A lot of browsers, once you start getting past the 12 megabyte file size in a CSS file, it can start causing strange problems. And also when you browse through the source code using the developer console, it's going to cause all sorts of lag issues. So all in all, it's just not a great experience. But now let's look at how this JIT compiler can help us. So back over in our code base, I'm going to come down to our webpack.mix.js file and let me just break this down onto a new line so you can see what's going on. So let's just get rid of these requires just for now and then get rid of that plugins input and let's just close this off. And now let's pass in the options to this. So you can call options in here. And now inside of this options, we need to tell it to use the Tailwind JIT. So to do that, we can say post CSS and we just need to pass it in the requires that were currently in there minus the tailwind i'm going to use the tailwind jit so let's require them files back in so we need post css import we also want to require the auto prefixer and finally the secret source to get this working we need to require in that jit compiler that we just downloaded so we can do at tailwind css forward slash jit and there we go that should be everything we need to get this up and running 
So if I just save on this now and then head back over to the terminal, then if we run npm run dev again, as you can see, that's only taken one and a half milliseconds this time. And the output of the CSS file is just 29.6 kilobytes. So that's an amazing reduction on what we used to have. You can put this into watch mode. So let's do that now. So we can do npm run watch all. And then this will now sit watching for any file changes. So now let's add a new class onto one of our views so we can actually see this in action. So over in the project, I'm going to come under resources and views and just open up the dashboard. So now let's just add something inside of here. It doesn't really need to make sense. So let's just do a background of gray 800 and just save on that and jump back over to our terminal. As you can see, that's now recompiled because it's seen that there's a change in one of the blade templates. And it only took 219 milliseconds to compile rather than taking six to eight seconds. So let's just check this out in the browser. As you can see, there's our gray background of 800 around our div. So let's just go into the view page source and open up our app.css file. And then you can see how small this actually is. So it's only pulled in the classes that we actually need. So if you did enjoy this video, don't forget to give it a like and hit that subscribe button. Also, don't forget to check out my channel, Penguin Digital, where I have a lot of Laravel related content on there. And all the links you'll need for these are in the description.